Now I'm gonna uh, ask if we can try a little exercise, a, a logical exercise in prediction making. Okay. Yeah, now crystal I'm, balling. Crystal balling, but not so much just conjecture. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested to see what how, what you see as the future of mankind, future of Earth, future of humanity, but based on the teachings of the Baha'i Faith? Well, I think the immediate future is going to be rough. And we've been told this. There are Christian prophecies to that effect. There are prophecies in the Old Testament to that effect. If I knew more about Islam, I'm sure in, in, in the Holy Quran, uh, they're very likely are predictions of what, the, what mankind will be going through um, as well as in other other religions it's hard to point to a place where you actually can find tranquility and contentment and um, where the deepest concerns of humanity are all being adequately addressed and so on but when we look into the writings of the Baha'i faith, which we consider as Baha'is God's most recent um, message to the whole of mankind, it states it pretty clearly. We're going to go through some difficult times. Some have come about as a result of the errors of mankind. The the disobedience to his will and um, and falling away from, from even a belief in God, the godlessness that has taken place. But some are, are those, especially those of a natural origin, that are just going to happen. We don't know the full extent of all of that that's going to be happening, but there is some legitimacy to the kind of apocalyptic suspicion or predictions that have taken place. But we as Baha'is believe that we're going to survive that as, as a humanity. There will be casualties, no question. But rather than the world coming to an end that some people believe. We don't believe that. We believe that a cycle has come to an end and a new cycle has begun. And so that the predictions in the Old and New Testament about uh, the abomination of desolation, for example, and, and the end of the world are merely are, are wrong interpretations that what's, what's coming to an end is the end, and has come to an end, is the end of a cycle, and the beginning of a, a new cycle, the earlier stages of which will be very difficult, but later on will, re will flower into a magnificent um, new future, where mankind will make an extraordinary quantum leap in terms of its advancement and that my suspicion is that a hundred years from now humanity is going to look back on this period that we're going through and saying to themselves how did how did we ever survive the the effects of those barbarians <laughs> mm. um, so in the in the, in the uh, looking to the far distant future I'm extremely optimistic now how are we doing not nearly my judgment, not nearly as well as we should. We have choice. I mean, we God gave us uh, self uh, self determination, will, and um, we've dragged our heels so many so many junctures in this process, and um, and and we've made the wrong choices. Here's an example from a prison the founder of the Baha'i Faith, wrote to the most prominent and most powerful leaders of the world 
this is back in the late 1800s, and announced who he was, what his authority was, and what they needed to do to shape up, not only personally, but their 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 uh, their communities. He asked them to seek um, that that uh, address the problems of the poor, address to resist the inclinations towards excessive materialism, to not fall into the pattern of of amassing huge armaments that would cripple economically cripple their countries. I mean, look what what we're doing right now. We're we're so much in debt. And Russia almost completely collapsed because of their arms race with the United States. I mean, all of this advice he gave in the late 1800s to the crowning rulers of the world, and with only one exception, the rest either ignored or rebuked him. The only one who didn't was Queen Victoria, who said, if this be of God, and it, it will endure. All of the rest, interestingly enough, were had such power, such absolute power and authority at that time that with a stroke of the pen they could have instituted such widespread and dramatic social reforms that would would have made the present an entirely different world than that which we're experiencing right now. They could have spared mankind a lot of heartbreak, a lot of hardship, a lot of persecution, a lot of deaths. What we're saying is that could have been the beginning of the most great peace already back then. That's right. And now because that's not hap has not happened, what is the the path? Well, we're, we've been told what the path is. Our job is to spread the word of Baha'u'llah. It's, you know, it's interesting. Truth is not negotiated. No. It's discovered. That's that. That really is key. Mm. So um, we have we have been given the gift of choice. And we've chosen, and we've chosen not to choose, or or to make a decision, or we've chosen the wrong thing. Napoleon the Third said, when he received his message, he said, "Well, if he's a prophet of God, then I'm too." Such arrogance, and you know, he had such absolute power and authority, and within a very few years, he was imprisoned. He lost all of his power. They had the chance to make this extraordinary and dramatic change, to institute this change for the benefit of humanity. And with one exception, they chose out of arrogance and ignorance and pride to um, the alternative. Now, what is the the lesser peace? And the lesser peace will be a political peace. Political peace. And it's when suddenly, through fear, for no other reason but through fear, through fear. of the total extermination of humankind on this planet, we will be forced to forge uh, incrementally those kinds of agreements that ultimately will lead to at least yielding some degree of sovereignty to an international body who will then have the authority to um, intervene and um, uh, arbitrate among nation states when two countries are at each other's throats. And should they decide a non-peaceful resolution, then that world authority will have at its uh, beck and call an international police that can be called upon to keep those two countries from going at each other militarily. 
So the impetus into the lesser peace is fear. That's right. And would you say that the impetus, or this is what I recall, the impetus into the most great peace would then be love? Absolutely. Mm. Well, um, I think that really concludes uh, concludes our wonderful well, discussion tonight. Let me just make one one statement as kind of a a very brief kind of summary. Please. Education, we started out talking about education and then moved towards education and the Baha'i faith and so on. I would like to kind of conclude by saying that in the Baha'i writings is found the most extraordinary endorsement of the role that true education must play and will play and has to play in helping us work through these problems. In no other revelation is there such an incredible and total endorsement of the importance of education. Baha'u'llah says that God's supreme gift to man is his intellect, the gift of understanding, because understanding its ignorance that has caused these problems and it's through understanding and the development of our capacity for consciousness that uh, we will eventually work through these problems and uh, set mankind in a direction that's for his benefit. Um, in fact, Allah makes such a strong statement that one of a couple of which go like this that education is so important it's better that a child not be born than to be born and deprived of a proper education. That's a pretty strong statement. It's a very strong statement. But we've reached this point in our social and spiritual evolution that we cannot go on in a reasonable way and a safe and productive way in the absence of, of, of an understanding of what the truth is. And that requires an extraordinary education. And the transfer that has taken place in physics from a mechanistic to a holistic, organismic, philosophical and theoretical foundation, that same change needs to, this is how tying both topics together, that same change needs to take place in terms of education because so much of contemporary is that education is based upon a, a mechanistic, reductionistic view of reality. And we know that there's so much more to reality than what can be perceived through the senses. Um, that's going to be the most exciting venture that humankind will be taking in order to be able to act on the extraordinary promise and the principles that are represented in this latest revelation. Well, I think we're all looking forward to that. <laughs> Can't wait. It's Thank not going it's not to happen today, though, <laughs> or tomorrow. That's true. But eventually it will happen. Hopefully sooner than later. Well, it's it depends on us. That's very true. It's been absolutely a delight and an honor to have this conversation. I've enjoyed with you. being with you. Thank you so much, and I hope uh, this uh, everything that we've talked about will be of some benefit to our viewers. Um, and of course, uh, it's once again thank you for oh, coming and joining us. You're here. welcome.